This is the Beef Podcast, presented by Beefy Marketing. Oh yeah, welcome back to another episode of the Beef Podcast. I'm your host, as always, John Kelly, aka John the Marketer on Instagram, TikTok. Man, if you haven't been paying attention to my Instagram, I've been putting out reel after reel of all of these awesome businesses that I get to visit, have lunch at, all that stuff. We just... We pretty much said, you know what? We're spending all of our time there anyway. Why don't we just start recording some of that stuff, push it out, show people what they have, um, not only to offer for their guests or their clients, but just to kind of talk about them a little bit and then try and get them on the Beef Podcast, one of the hottest uh, podcasts out right now. But on the show today, I have Chris Cruz with Cruz Customs Flags. Chris, welcome to the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure as always. Um, man, you got some really cool stuff going on with, you know, some custom bourbon barrel flags and even some other custom stuff that we'll get into later on in the show. But, uh, we always start out with an icebreaker question. So I want to do that first, which would you rather live without heat and AC or social media? Man, uh, I could live without social media more than heat or AC, especially with how hot it's been here in Kentucky. And I know it's probably even hotter in Texas. Yeah, no, in Texas, man, uh, we've been kind of averaging 101 degree days down here. Uh, that was going to be my answer too. like, uh, there's no way that I could live without heater AC right now. Um, it does get a little bit cold, but obviously not super cold. You know, we're not like, uh, I mean, I consider all y'all to be northerners, you know, if you're north of Texas, but, uh, up north, it gets extremely, extremely cold. And, uh, I know that obviously they go without AC and they have to have heat for us. It's probably a little flipped. I got to have that AC more than I do heat for sure. But yeah. I still don't want to have no heat whenever it's, you know, 30, 40 degrees outside. Uh, we had snow Mageddon recently and, uh, we got some crazy snow down here and, uh, I think it got down to, I got a 19, I think it was like a 1945 pier and beam home we were renting and living in. And it got so cold that it was like 27 degrees inside the house. And so without mm-hmm. heater AC down here in Texas, we're going to die. It's not even a joke. Um, definitely would rather do without that. Now on the social media side, it's still a hard decision. Like this isn't something where I'm just easily cutting out social media like I said in the beginning, man, we've been doing so much with um, the reels and updates that we're using to kind of drive some business towards us and, and connect with our audience. But I got to get rid of that social media before I do anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing I know about your company is that um, y'all at least try to or hire all veterans inside of your facility. Yeah, to, to make all of our products. Now, we, we do have some other folks uh, that help around, but all the handcrafting of the products are, are all combat veterans. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know that um, also you are a veteran yourself. So this is a veteran owned and operated business and somebody that we absolutely have to support. I appreciate it. Yeah, we we I have a vision of, of hiring as many veterans as possible. So it's pretty simple. The more products we sell, the more veterans we hire. That's awesome. So when exactly did you start serving? Yeah, so I enlisted. I was 22. So I played college football a couple of years and then joined the military. So I was always used to being told what to do. So I said, why not join the military? <laughs> were you uh, were you starting out there on the on the field or what did you do there? Um, so I didn't actually get to start. I was uh, I played for a small junior college in Mississippi and um, we had a lot of great talent on that team, like Javon Walker, Deion Branch, some NFL type talent. So um, kind of like last chance you, I didn't get a chance to play a lot. Uh, wasn't, wasn't that good at the college level and was told I wasn't good enough to continue to play anymore. So ah. I, I said, you know what, I'll join the military. So uh, that's what I did. Always good enough to play in the military. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll take anybody. <laughs> right. So, um, as far as like this being therapeutic for combat veterans and, and just veterans alike, are are y'all, you say you're only employing veterans there at your facility. Are y'all doing any type of mental health outreach or is there like a charity aspect to this or how does that work? No, um, no, no set programs. Uh, A couple of things I, I don't like that I didn't like about corporate America is, is the bureaucracy. Right. So we we do as we feel like we can do or or feel like we need to do. Um, like as far as mental health, I think just the fact of working here, I think veterans miss 
two things when they get out of the military. They miss uh, the camaraderie that they had. So we have that in the shop. And they also miss the the sense of purpose. And us making American flags and other patriotic items, uh, we know that it's going to somebody that that loves America and and that's going to appreciate what we, we've got to offer. So um, as far as giving back, we give back all the time. Um, in the middle of the pandemic, um, we created a flag with a, a, a heartbeat through it, if you will. So the, the EKG uh, heart rhythm. Um, and my wife is in the medical field and she's like, well, we might need, you know, some, some lunch breaks or whatever, some food. We don't know what, what's going to happen. And, you know, uh, a lot of people didn't know what was going to happen. So I said, okay, we'll just create a flag and any profits we make from that, we'll just give back to your hospital and y'all can eat and whatever. And we had one of those made. And two days later, we were on national news on Fox news and we ended up selling 5,000 of those flags. And, we were able wow. to donate 35,000 to two different hospitals. So $70,000 total. And, uh, my wife and her, her coworkers are still eating off of some of that money. Yeah. And, and, I bet. and she's actually, she's actually on the committee to see where the money goes. Cause what I told them is I didn't want it to get lost in, in the middle of nowhere and make sure it, it got used by the people that, that needed it the most on the front line. So, um, that was an example where we get back. We partner with a nonprofit called USA cares. Um, they help post 9-11 veterans in crisis with, uh, you know, keep keeping them uh, out of being evicted from their house and all kinds of triggers that, that do lead to veteran suicide. Usually financial is, is one of those main ones. So they help they help uh, veterans in crisis that way. We partner with them all the time. Uh, we also make a special edition flag, uh, pink line flag for breast cancer awareness. So every October we work with the American Cancer Society and give give a significant portion back. So we do give back. We just are, are, we can't, can't be all things to all people. So we select a few that we, we like to support, or if an initiative comes up that, that needs immediate help, we'll try to try to fill that gap when we can. So um, it's a good thing about being small and nimble is we can make those changes and, and, and do that. Well, and like you said, with the bureaucracy, well, I just can't talk today. Apparently the bureaucracy (laughs) of, 501c3s, nonprofits, and government entities, and all that kind of stuff, where you've kind of got to jump through hoops to be beneficial for people. Um, I mean, I, I can totally see where it's like mm, we're not technically a charity or anything; we just do good things. Like that's admirable. I like that. Yeah, I mean, we were at a crossroads when we started because there is a you know a philanthropic approach. There's a helping veteran approach. We we probably could get some funding, and I was like. I don't want to go through all that. I don't want to make it more, more bureaucratic because I might as well go work for somebody. If I'm having to work for a board, why be an entrepreneur? If I'm going to have a boss other than my wife, why, why start your own business? So I was at that crossroads early on. I said, you know what, we'll do good when we can. And we'll, you know, we'll, uh, we'll just get rid of all the, the craziness and, and have a fun, good workplace. Like the guys don't clock out for lunch. Cause if I, if I need you to clock out and there's a trust issue, we got bigger problems. So yeah. we don't, we, we don't do a lot of the things that, that I, I was exposed to in factories and such as when I was an environmental health safety professional. And that's what I did from the time I got out of the military to, to now. So I've been involved in manufacturing for 15, 16 years before I started my own business. Gotcha. So as far as the things that you offer from your shop, is it all custom or it sounded like maybe there's some pieces y'all create that you sell kind of stock? Yeah, um, we we custom all of our products can be customized, but okay. we have a, a set of stock items for sure. Um, we obviously the the American flag handcrafted out of bourbon barrels. We have them in all all ki- kinds of sizes. We use the officer rank structure, fortunately or unfortunately. So lieutenant, captain, colonel, general. Um, I get a lot of crap for that because I was enlisted, but. Uh, we couldn't say we're selling privates. That doesn't do good on e-commerce when ser- <laughs> searches come up. So, <laughs> so we decided to go the officer route, and that's the only reason. Uh, but uh, so all kinds of different patriotic products, but all all customizable. But most of it is stock items. Okay, and so beyond the flags, I know you had mentioned that you do some other custom art pieces as well. What other types of things can I find? Yeah, you'll find uh, anything from bourbon barrel bottle openers to uh, small flags to um, 
uh, bourbon and bullet pins. So we have a 308 cartridge and the top of it's a, made out of a bourbon barrel. So uh, we have whiskey grills, which is a white oak drinking vessel to mimic a, a bourbon barrel. So kind of unique gifts that, you know, that someone that has everything that you get, get them something uh, from our shop. So uh, a lot of times if we think it's cool here in the shop, we'll, we'll launch it. And we've got some new stuff coming up that we've been working on. So is this an online only store or do y'all have a storefront? Well, we have a quasi storefront. It's our shipping and receiving and storefront. We're a small operation. So it's, uh, it was supposed to be a retail spot, but it's, we, we've done so much e-commerce. It's kind of taken over as a mini warehouse kind of thing. So uh, oh, our goal man. and dream is to have a storefront, but right now it's, it's, you can come here and pick up stuff and, and look through stuff, but it's not pretty. <laughs> yeah. I understand that completely. We had somebody on the show that's like that. They make custom doormats and we got to go tour their place and everything. And they're like, Hey, if you want to stop in and see the place or pick up a mat from us, you absolutely can, but this is not a store. We make stuff here. Yeah. Same. same. So are these like individual artists that you employ? Are they kind of like a, a manufacturing line worker where they're just doing a piece of the puzzle or how does your uh, creation team work on these projects? It kind of all depends on the project. Um, a lot of them are, are, is kind of like an assembly line. We'll prep the material. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, bourbon barrels aren't the easiest to work with. They're not straight. They're not square. And white oak is one of the hardest woods there is to work with. But um, most of the time, it's, it's done through somewhat of an assembly line. But if we get a custom project, uh, we'll work together on and, and create a piece of art. But I will say, even though it is assembly line like every bourbon barrel piece is, is unique. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of woodworking and a little bit of art. So what will, what will happen is you don't want too many dark pieces in the flag and you'll have to pick and sand. And even when you're sanding the pieces, you're not sanding all the character away. So it's, I call it a little bit of art and a little bit of woodworking because every piece that's touched gets thought about before it gets placed. Uh, it sounds amazing and unique. That is, I'm with you on finding a unique gift for somebody because, you know, like with my wife this year, I got her a custom song made because I was like, I can buy her another piece of jewelry. I can buy her something else that, you know, if we want it or need it in our life, I don't know how, you know, y'all live. But it, it's kind of like if I want it or need it and I can afford it, I'm going to buy it, you know, so I don't yeah. need a special day for my wife to buy me something. I'll just get what I need. So when it comes to gifts, we're really looking for something that is unique, stands out and is kind of one of a kind. Even if there's 10 other ones just like it, like you said, being able to personalize it with you know name or if you're a veteran rank or, um, you know, your whatever branch you were in or affiliated with or that kind of thing. It, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so I will share since it's brand new. We we I'm going to share something that we haven't launched yet. So this is kind of top secret. We're going to come out a new with a new line of flag called. I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah. Beautiful. So that's my old military uniform. What we're going to call this flag is going to be our whole line of flag is going to be called New Purpose Flags. So what will happen is is someone can send something a memento of a lost one, a loved one. Um, their old uniform piece of it, a piece of their house, a piece of whatever uh, that they that may be in their basement, in their closet that that they don't have a way to remember that loved one by. And you can send it to us and we can put it on a stripe of a flag and you can place that American flag uh, with a piece of that loved one or, or the, that memory um, with them. So uh, like my wife, her papa used to wear flannel shirts. She's got a piece of his flannel shirt we're going to put on the flag and she's going to display it. And she can think of him anytime um, that that's displayed on the shelf. So uh, we, we we're purposeful about that. We want to we want to create something unique. So I don't think it gets more much more unique than that. So that's coming out soon, uh, I would say, in the next few weeks. Oh, that's killer. I there's a few items I can think of because I'm one of those people. My wife goes through my closet and she's like, why do you have this shirt? You're not going to wear that shirt. And I'm like, no, that's. I'm not going to wear that shirt. When I was a kid growing up, me and my dad used to both wear this shirt. Like that's a sentimental piece of, of history that I'll never get rid of. And she's like, man, why do you have this stuff in the closet? It's taking up room and you're never going to wear it. Like, why are yeah. you holding on to it? And exactly what you said, it's like, it's a last piece or last connection I have of my father, you know, and I have some things 
that are that sentimental of my mother. So I've already got a couple of things I'm going to have to buy from you then once that launches, <laughs> because you're absolutely right. Like that'd be really cool to have, you know, something like that with a memory of my mom or my dad there that I can hang in my office or in my bedroom or wherever I, I want to in the house. That's really cool. Yep. I, I thank you. We, we, we thought long and hard about that. And another thing we're going to do even is, uh, we we tore out a wall in our house and I kept a, a two before, uh, uh, out of it and the rest we threw away. Probably shouldn't have as much as two before as are today, but <laughs> yeah, probably uh, away $3,000 worth. Of yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't want to pull the nails out, but anyway, I kept one and I'm going to build a new flag for our house and a part of it is going to have a piece of that wood. So when me and my wife are gone, the kids can take that flag and say that piece of wood there is from the house that I grew up in, which I think is really cool. Uh, so anything like that, uh, that's kind of where I got the idea. I'm like, I'm keeping this wood. That's kind of neat. Well, why don't we create a line of flags that that create memories? So that's a uh, that's something new we're coming out with for sure. Yeah, I'm too sentimental of a person. I'm I'm probably going to spend way too much money there because that's what I'm sitting here thinking of like the bunker gear I used when I went through the fire academy that I still have and all of that stuff, man, this is, this is really cool. What kind of pricing? And I know this is a loaded question, so I get it. You know, I'm looking for like a range and a ballpark. If I come to your website, am I going to be spending $30 or am I going to be spending $5,000 or what's the range depending on sizes and stuff that you have to offer? So anything flag related is anywhere from 75 to $1,200. So okay. our Lieutenant basic black and white Lieutenant $75 all the way up to our five foot 60 pound general flag. This red, white, and blue is $1,200. So in anything in between, we have bottle openers that are 20, 20 bucks or so pins are, you know, $30. So, uh, nothing, uh, nothing outrageous on the, on the low end. It just depends on how fancy you want to get. Right. No, and that's exactly the answer that I expected, you know, um, just trying to figure out, you know, if I'm sitting there looking for a nice Christmas gift to get somebody this year, I can buy anything I want from a $20 keychain for, um, you know, a brother-in-law all the way up to a $1,200 piece for dad or grandpa or, you know, somebody yeah. that's close to you. That's really killer. Man, so we, we even mean, came up with these. These are little desktop flags. So they're all made out of bourbon barrels. There's the charge side. Oh, that's cool. So this is something that's 30 bucks. It can go. We did this when people were going back to their offices so they can have a little piece of America uh, sitting on their desk. So lo yeah. little things like that all the way up to, you know, bigger flags like the Colonel here. So, man, at the fire station, uh, we actually have a wooden American flag that was donated to us for our station. And uh, around there, you'll see like, you know, this old fire chief in the, in the area that's just kind of been around for a little while. He makes uh, custom lamps out of fire helmets or wow. out of SCBA bottles that we wear. We've got a whole bunch of um, old fire extinguishers that we're about to give to him to see if he can make some lamps out of that for us. So we're big on stuff like this around the station. So, I awesome. mean, those make really cool gifts for people, you know, at the station. I mean... Yeah, we, we love having that. We stuff. do offer we 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 do hand paint the red line here as well. So all of our products we have the you know the blue line, red line, green line. <laughs> yeah, there's a RB. lot of colors on there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all the above. So as far as custom <clears throat> pieces go, does it generally have to be something that you kind of have made up like a small flag, a keychain, a big flag, or can I come to you and just a totally unique idea? and say, I have this really cool idea for something that'll hold my watch and phone on my nightstand or, you know, something like that and kind of commission a custom piece. It, it all depends on the size. Um, like it, it has to be worthwhile for us to pull off of other projects, to be honest. Uh, sure. but we, we're open to, to trying anything. Uh, we're doing a POW MIA sign for a guy to put beside his flag. So we're open to conversations about custom pieces. I mean, we are cruise custom, so we, we, we should be doing some custom stuff, but it, it all kind of depends. Uh, I've been known to say yes. And I've been known to say, no, it just kind of depends on really what we've got going on currently. And then, uh, depending on how complex the project too, we made our first Canadian flag the other day, which was pretty cool with a Jim awesome. beam barrel head. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Nothing like a fun. piece of an American bourbon barrel to make a Canadian flag out of. 
Yeah, we couldn't find any Crown Royal barrels, so <laughs> I don't I think mean, they age that stuff. Crown's okay, you know, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not bourbon. You're in Kentucky, yeah. Absolutely, we have, our, we have our fair share of bourbon here. I will tell you that. I mean, don't they call it bourbon country? Like, isn't that isn't that almost oh, definitely? You got to learn to like basketball, horse racing, and bourbon when you move here. <laughs> I need to come visit, man. I uh, I found out not too long ago, a couple of years, that uh, I had a brother. You know, I'm one of those weird stories of ancestry DNA. And uh, my sister and I were a strong match. And then enter this, you know, what you would assume to be a random person, but it's not. It's like, holy cow, dad had another kid, you know. And um, I mean, I'm talking my entire life. I'm 34 years old and never knew. I mean, we had an inkling like we thought in the later years before my dad passed, he had found out like, hey, I may have a kid out there, but it just wasn't something, you know, we kind of sent out those blanket searches and posts on social media like, hey, we're looking for our brother if he exists and here's the details we have. Never had anything, just kind of forgot about it. And then one night I'm driving home and I get a, a ping on my phone and I, I look at the uh, the email and it it says, Hey, you've got a match on ancestor DNA and a message from this person. And I look and he's like, how do you know Gary Kelly? And I'm like, well, I get home. I'm like, that's my dad. Why? He's like, I think I might be your brother. And I was like, Holy crap, this is crazy. Well, come to find out he lives in Kentucky. So I need oh, cool. to go visit for sure. Plus, uh, man, I'm a, a bourbon fan. So, uh, it's somewhere that has to be on my bucket list. Yeah, well, come on. I, I know some people in the bourbon industry. We can take a good tour somewhere. Right. Well, now I just need to tell Beefy, like, I'll get a bunch of really good content for Beefy Marketing, so you just need to send me out there, you know? We'll come meet with, with Cruise Customs Flags and, you know, get some content for us. Yeah, we'll, we'll go hang out at Heaven Hill. I know the folks out there, we're doing some work. We've done some work for them, and we're doing some now. So, yeah, come on. We'll so well, limitations definitely. on the personalization of each item. Can I personalize every single item? And do y'all have just kind of like some custom things to choose from where it's like, here's military branches or, you know, first responder organizations, or you can put names or that kind of thing, or how much can I customize? Um, typically what we do is we have a, a build your own flag kind of thing, kind of like the Vista print of flags. So you can go on and upload whatever photo you might like in this field of stars. Um, typically we, we laser at stuff on the, the white stripes of the flag. Um, so that's typically how we do it. You go on and do that. If you have anything beyond that, you can just shoot us an email and, uh, we can, we can go from there and figure out something a little more custom, but Usually it's something in the field of stars or on the lines. Uh, and then obviously when we launch the new purpose flag, that'll be a whole nother right. um, can of worms. <laughs> yeah. So you're using lasers for everything you do in house. Yeah. Lasers. And we have a CNC. We, we also own a, a business a sister brand that I bought during the pandemic called the wooden States of America and they're magnetic key holders of all 50 States. So Wow. Uh, super strong rare earth magnets embedded in, in the States and you can just throw your keys and hang with us on, on there. So, uh, pretty cool. Uh, so we have a CNC that does all that work. So they're, uh, they're all also made by veterans. Nice. So where can I see like photos and stuff of everything that y'all are doing? Maybe behind the scenes looks, are y'all all over social media? We're on all the things we're on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, Twitter. What else am I missing? That's that's where most of the things. But Instagram and uh and and Facebook obviously are and and we're starting to do some fun stuff on TikTok. Oh yeah, TikTok is I, yeah. Honestly, I started out as somebody who didn't believe in it, didn't like it, never wanted to even see it. And then the more I had friends showing me like, Hey, look at this funny video, check this out. You know, this is crazy. I just kind of turned into that. Well, I'll download the app. I'll never have an account, you know, nothing like that. I'll just download the app so I can see these videos. And then I was like, man, I really like that content creator and I want to see more of their videos. I need to be able to save their stuff or like their, their stuff, you know? So all right, I'm going to create an account, but I'm never going to post a video on it. Not going to do anything stupid like that. I'm not a teenager, you know, and then now, yeah, you can find me all over TikTok, whether it's videos of my kids or my cats or my dog or, you know, messing with my wife or whatever it is, man, we, we make videos and 
uh, definitely oh, yeah. spend a lot of yeah. hours of my day there. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun for sure. Um, we we have one video that didn't get a whole lot of attention, but I liked it. It was <laughs> challenging LeBron James and his his chalk throw. We we used some nice bourbon barrel sawdust, so it was kind of fun. We we all threw it up, and, but he never replied. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, maybe one day. I don't know. You know, you've been on the podcast now. Maybe he'll recognize it. I don't know. That's right. You never, you never know. <laughs> like who for cares? that fancy around here. Yeah, um, so cares? what is your username for that? How do we find you? At Cruise Customs Flags on nice all, all the things. Okay. Except Twitter. Twitter has a smaller one. I think it's just Cruise Flags. Okay. But all the rest is Cruise Customs Flags. Gotcha. And is it the same for the website? It's w, yeah, www.cruisecustomsflags. Yep. We left it all the same. Gotcha. And you got to remember, we actually, the had, on we the actually had a good marketing company at one point. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. No, that's, uh, I mean, that's killer. I like, I want to, I really want to see what y'all have to offer. I just heard about you a couple of days ago and Andrew was like, Hey man, I met this great guy you need to have on the show. And, um, I haven't had time to research everything that you have to offer, but I have a feeling I'm going to wind up spending way too much money there. Um, never, because never yeah, too I much. want all the stuff. Like I want you to take and, and make that middle, uh, line on the flag out of bunker gear. Like there's just all kinds of stuff I can think of that we could do. Yeah. We can make you a big one and do something on every stripe. So yeah. Or do a small one with something on every stripe. We'll come up with something. (laughs) We're, we're we're good like that. We're, we've got a great team, very knowledgeable. Um, we've got some, some pretty cool stuff coming out in addition to, to these flags, these, uh, new, new purpose flags. But, you know, we, we, one of the first, two flags that we made for somebody else were both for my father and father-in-law. They're both veterans. And, you know, we used to exchange gift cards at Christmas and I'm like, this is boring. <laughs> so I, I went to the garage and I was like, well, I made one for me. I made one for them. That's when I really, when I saw their reaction at Christmas, I was like, yeah, we got something. We got a badass product and it it's therapeutic and it's unique. So, uh, it all started with, you know, gifts for my, my father and father-in-law. Um, in addition to the one we made for the house. Well, and it means something, I think, you know, whereas uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I appreciate the heck out of anybody who wants to give me anything, no matter what it is. But when you give someone cash or a check or gift card or, you know, something like that, I mean, sure, they may go buy something really nice that they've been wanting with it. But when you hand them something like this, that's custom made, it's unique and it has meaning behind it then it becomes something that they cherish, you know? And I think that that's far more valuable. It, it doesn't matter if you buy a $20 keychain from here, it would make, make more of an impact on me than a $1,200 gift card would, because I can go buy anything I want for that 1200 bucks. But you know, what, what does it really mean behind the gift whenever you're just buying something and saying, Hey, go get yourself something nice. Yeah. Well, we, we couldn't agree more. And I'll, I'll share this. Like I'm, I'm the owner, but I still get excited when we get orders. It d- doesn't even matter. Like, um, we're still small enough, and I, I pretty much am the 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 person that emails with customer service. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoy engaging with customers. So, um, you know, we we've been on national news several times, and I still try to get to every customer that that we've had. So, um, not only are you getting a, a cool product that has meaning, you're getting you know some a real person emailing you back, thanking you, all of those type things. So at least I try, I do my best. (laughs) That's what we try to focus on here. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had people on here that are multimillionaires and I've had people on here that are just now starting something, whether it be a nonprofit or a really small business. But I like to focus on and hear those stories of people like you and your company that have such a great story and a great impact on those that mean something to us as well. You know, our military first responders, um, healthcare workers, teachers, all of those people deserve something a little extra. And and the fact that y'all kind of give back to that makes a huge difference to me. I know it makes a difference to our listeners and, uh, it's just a company that I definitely want to go out there and support. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I have a motto that I've been using pretty regularly and, uh, you know, as an owner, we've donated more to nonprofits and such than I ever made in my last year of of corporate America. And 
And I, we were talking one day and I told my wife, I said, you know what? It's, it's easy to do something good in this world. If you just give a shit a little bit. Yep. So that's been my tagline. Just, just give a shit a little bit and you can do some amazing things. So um, we're just going to keep giving a shit and helping out and do what we can and um, try to survive this crazy economy as well. I don't think enough people are talking about that. We're, our sales are worse now than they were in the middle of the pandemic, which I'm not the only business, I'm sure. Um, you know, people are cutting back uh, and I don't blame them. I have a family. I put gas in my truck. So yeah. uh, I don't think people realize the impact they can have by buying something made in the USA versus jumping on Amazon. Um, you know, yeah. we, we're getting into the wholesale game now. We went to Atlanta's um, America Mart. It's the furthest thing from America's Mart. <laughs> 90% of that stuff's made in China, which is disheartening because there are shops all over the country buying wholesale from them, turn around and selling it to, to people on the street. So uh, if I can yell from the loud, uh, from the, you know, the rooftops, it's your, when you buy a made in America, it means something. Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't even matter if it's from us. Um, I can tell you, there's a lot of small businesses struggling out there. There's a lot of decent sized businesses struggling just, uh, just to try to make it. So that's, that's kind of my, my soapbox for now. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but it's, it's so true. It's something I've tried to be more deliberate about because I'm, I'm the world's worst. Like I hate Amazon. I hate Walmart, but at the same time, it's like, I'm so dependent on them. Like I think many Americans are of, you know, sometimes you need that cheap, whatever it is more out of necessity, I would say. Um, so where it's like, man, I can get it shipped to my door in a day, sometimes same day, you know, two days. I, I remember back when you would order something online and you couldn't see it, you couldn't return it, and it would take weeks to get to your house. And then now we're so spoiled that when the Amazon says two day shipping, I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to wait this long for my product to get here? How do they not have it on prime now or next day or, you know? Uh, it's yeah. crazy how spoiled we get with that, Most but definitely. I really have been trying to be more deliberate about, especially on stuff like this items where you're buying gifts. Why not think ahead, take the time and get something that is truly one of a kind versus, you know, just going and buying another piece of plastic off of Amazon and giving that to somebody. But, um, yeah, even yeah. our necessities and, and stuff that we get, it's like, if we could just pay a little bit extra and. I know that I'm being hypocritical because, you know, I'm the guy that I, I got to save where I can save. And sometimes that's it. But if we can support just a little bit more of the mom and pop shops and especially the American shops that that have American made stuff right here, then I think we'd be doing a huge service to our economy and to help out other people. Yeah. And I think I think that's coming around. I think with the pandemic and the supply chain issues, I think more Americans are are seeing that. So uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what shakes out. But I, I, I'm i I'm confident that there there are people out there that, that care. Absolutely. And, and we'll do, the, do the right thing for sure. So how do I go about starting an order or starting the conversation with you to say, I want to order something that's kind of custom? Um, you could email us at cruisecustoms at gmail or uh, sales at cruisecustomsflags.com. But yeah, you just shoot us an email, get on my, the first step. We'll probably get on our website, see what size you want, kind of get an idea before starting that conversation, because we have so many different sizes, so many different options. Um, but once you have an idea of what size and, and whatnot, then we can start the conversation on what you want to add via email. And if it gets too crazy, just leave me your phone number. And we'll give you a call and figure it out. Gotcha. And do y'all offer any type of mock-ups or proofs of the design before it's ordered? Um, on the website, when you do the customization that way, yes, when it gets real crazy, we don't at this time. Sure. I can we, imagine we it's hard to, to kind yeah, of it's hard to mock up some, up. some real crazy custom stuff. Uh, but we'll, we'll make sure like we'll take pictures along the way or and send you kind of progress before you assemble. Um, so you will get a mock-up. It just won't be a fancy digital one. It'll be an iPhone picture with, Hey, does this look right? <laughs> Hey, it's the owner here, guy. I'm just uh, checking in on, on you to see how you like this so far. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's hey, how we rock. I, like I mean, it, man. and, that, and I, I think people miss that. So a hundred percent. That's what I was about to say. It was like, I, it, the reason I do this show is because I want to know the people who I'm supporting. You know, when I walk into a business and I'm ordering food or I'm buying something or having a gift made, 
it just, it's nicer to walk in knowing like, oh yeah, no, I know Chris, I trust him. This is going to be a great project because I heard everything he did, or I've done business here for a while and I know them and I know their story. And it's easier to relate to other people and give a referral out even when sure. it's like, oh yeah, no, uh, my dad was a you know Vietnam veteran and I want to get something that's going to be a gift, you know, for someone that can commemorate my dad, you know, in that in that way. And it's like, well, cool. I know that Chris is a veteran and I know that he does this all the time and he's the guy to go to, you know, it's nice to, to know that story and that background there. Sure. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of different businesses and probably wouldn't be in business if it wasn't for some of those bad businesses <laughs> of what not to do. So, um, we try our best. I mean, we make mistakes, but we'll own up to it. That's one of the things that I stand by is, if we make a mistake, we'll own up to it and, and make it right. That's kind of kind of my motto was okay, if we if you if we get it wrong, we'll make it right. I hear you. Anything that you don't do, anything that would be a waste of time just even reaching out to you and asking if I can get done? Ooh, um we don't do it's kind of an unwritten code. There's a couple of makers in Louisville in the bourbon barrel space. We don't do state cutouts of bourbon barrel staves. I can refer you. Um there's just a, some some of the things we don't do that other people do that we just kind of made a pact that we won't rip you off. You won't rip us off. You'll refer us. And so if anybody needs American flags made of bourbon barrels, they refer us. And then if anybody wants States or, or unique other bourbon barrel kind of stuff, we'll, we'll typically refer those out. So you can ask for it. I might say no, but here's another person. No, that's cool, man. That's, you know, one of the biggest stories that we saw here on the podcast with every guest that came in during the COVID times was during COVID, I had to go to people that would normally be considered competitors and brainstorm, come together and support each other in order to get through that. And I think that's probably something that is just true to today's economy and probably the future the rest of, of whatever problem <laughs> rolls out next, it seems, is, mm -hmm. yeah, they may be a competitor, but also they're another human being. And, you know, that's somebody we want to do business with, not just against. Yeah, I think two things. I, I agree with that. I think two things is business is 90 percent relationships. And you can lose a lot of business screwing somebody over. Yep. And another thing is there's enough out. There's enough business for people, even if you're competitors and you can find a unique niche or work together. Um, so I. I just always think tell myself there's enough business out there. Like you don't have to, the bourbon industry is a, a prime example. There's been distilleries that have burnt down in the past and big competitors, they would join together for the bourbon industry, even though they're direct competitors. So in the maker space, kind of the same thing. We're, we're still considered a maker slash manufacturing facility. Um, we look out for each other. Like if we see somebody ripping somebody off or whatever, we'll, we'll look out for one another. But, um, at the end of the day, there's enough, there's enough business out there for everybody. It's not, it's not that, that serious where it has to be too cutthroat. I used to get upset, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's awesome to hear. Well, I mean, I think we pretty much covered everything, you know, unless there's something that we haven't talked about that you just, you know, a message you want to get out to the world about you or your products. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I just, I think, kind of the metaphor we use is, you know, we give veterans new purpose and bourbon barrels new purpose. And my, my mission is to have a shop full of guys just chopping it up in the back, literally and figuratively, and just having a good time. And uh, the business model is pretty simple. The more products we sell, the more veterans we hire. It's not, business doesn't have to be complicated and we, we don't intend to make it complicated. We just need to sell a lot of product to hire a lot of veterans. And that's what we're trying to do. That's great, man. And I'm glad that we're here for it. And I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and, and sharing your story and telling us about that. And I, I can't wait to get on the website, check out everything you have to offer and get something ordered myself. Oh, absolutely. We'll hook you up, man. We'll take care of you. Thanks for having me. And thanks for letting us get our story out there and uh, just keep, keep driving on. Anytime. Listeners, there you have it. If you want to support some veterans, you want to support a mom and pop shop that's out there on the front line doing everything that they can to hire veterans and be a benefit for them while offering a nice, unique gift that you can give to a family member or loved one, then you found your company 
right here. So check out their website, check out their social media, continue to support them just like you support every guest we've ever had on here. I can't thank you enough for tuning in to another episode of the Beef Podcast. And uh, I can't thank you for enough for just supporting all these companies that we have on here. We couldn't do it if it weren't for listeners like you. And uh, man, I think we'll just see you on the next episode of the Beef Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, stay beefy, my friends. You've been listening to The Beef. Thanks for listening. Make sure to like, rate, and review. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information that you can use. And we'll be back soon.